What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, the man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking about tonight, Tuesday's NBA slate. Um, Sheets, uh, we, you know, we were talking pre-show. Congrats again. Huge win. That's awesome. He, Sheets won the showdown for those of you who, who weren't following last night and uh, chopped it up, which was uh, but a pretty nice win there. And uh, yeah. yeah, talk a little bit about that, and then we'll get into the slate. Yeah, I played, I played a little heavier last night as far as lineups. I played like 50 lineups. Um, and the one, the one ch- change that I made yesterday – and I'm trying to find that sweet spot of, of the of the blend between trying to get unique and trying to have a chance to win, you know. And um, I had I was using my salary cap at 48.8 for the last like several weeks, and I had a couple of, of, of opportunities with unique lineups. But last night I I, I, made, I upped it a little bit. I made it 49.2. Um, and what ended up happening was I'm pretty sure that the lineup I, I got that 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 won. Um, wouldn't have gotten there if I kept it at 48.8. And yet, on the other hand, it did chop, but wasn't the worst chop in the world. You know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. like it was chopping with like 100 people. You know, it was, uh, it was 22,000 for first, which is, I mean, I'll take that, I think, right? I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. No, no, forget, forget results. I mean, like, that's, that's, I guess that's okay. Yeah, I think and you I got, have to sometimes. And I got very, you know, lucky, call what it is. I mean, I had, uh, um, we had, we had T. Higgins basically had three receptions and a touchdown on the last drive of the game. I wasn't even sweating it. I was looking at something else, and all of a sudden, on my screen it came up winning twenty one thousand. I was like, "Huh, really?" So I just had, I then had to sweat nothing. I didn't, I didn't root for that whole drive. I didn't even know it was happening. So, I, and then I didn't have to worry because I was literally watching just Kobe were sitting kneel down the last three, three possessions that I watched. So that was good. Builds yeah. up a nice, uh, yeah, builds up a nice hashtag cushion for the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, days. right. Until we'll, the NBA one. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, NBA last night was not great. Um, it was. Listen, it was. It was a slate for the people that could that could be around and can really zig and zag. And that means it wasn't for me. I, if I had just stuck with what I wanted at the beginning, I was playing. I was going to have two sets of lineups. I had one where I was going to play Giannis, and the other I was going to play Paul George. You know what I mean? And and build around those. But yeah. I stuck with that. God knows how I would have ended up with the fifty percent Paul George. But we'll. Uh, he ended up only eight percent owned in the uh, in the, in the lottery. Um, I so. know that would have been. I, I I'm really regretting that one because I, I really tried to get he and Harden in at one point, and then I was I was playing my one big lineup, and I ended up with uh, with the weird Bradley Beal thing instead. I, I was really trying to get. I almost did the Paul George and Anthony Gill. I don't even know what Anthony Gill ended up scoring, but I would have certainly. Oh, you played him, Anthony Gill? No, I was considering it for a second because I would have been able to play Harden, George, and then all all of Philly yeah. with the other plays I wanted, but I wasn't. I loved marketing early in the day. He was in my first build. Um, and then I just sort of, got, you know, came off of it. Uh, a lot of the guys like that, uh, Anna Newby, Siakam, I played Barnes instead. It just was one of those nights where it's just, you got, you got to get it right. And the NBA is tough and we go on to the next one. On to the next one. Let me All ask right, let's pull up your screen, screen and, and we'll go game by game here and see what we got. Um, go on it's a little the slate here. So the name of the game is going to be trying to find a way to get different in a couple spots. Uh, pretty much always the same thing, especially on small slates in the NBA. But, well, uh, three, maybe three of them look like pretty decent basketball games. That that's the thing is you, you do have some actually good games. It's going to be very different than when we we do our NFL preview. It's like in in the NBA these days, I feel like everybody's got like every slate. There's a bunch of really good real life games. But there's never a good a real good life football game anymore. They, they all they all look terrible like re, like real life games. I swear yeah. it's like there's only three teams that I think are any good in football anyway. Um, but anyway, let's get in, let's get into the uh, to the slate. Uh, first up, what do you got? You've got the uh, Golden State of Miami. Sheets, why don't you start off here? And uh, I always, I always feel cautious about playing everybody in 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 the the Miami games. Golden State's not the kind of team that I do because the the, the first road game in Miami usually tends to be a little bit of a party time. Um, so you got guys a little hungover from the from the night before. But uh, this this isn't this is a, a great real life game. But I don't know how much I'm going to be heavily invested in this outside of Clay. What what are you looking at here, Sheets? All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take on that narrative a little bit um you'd, you'd have to think that that is it possible that you could get a game on a tuesday where they're not going to go out all night on a freaking monday night is it possible that maybe just maybe this one night that they don't go out and, and, and engage in debauchery maybe, maybe they came in for the weekend and went out saturday night i don't know um it's it's a rough scene but um i'm not too worried about curry being out till four in the morning um but I am worried about he just some, seems to be unplayable in fantasy. Um, let's take a look. I mean, he looks okay as usual, and, and you have this memory of him having good, good ceiling games, and 
he had a he had a good one in his first game of the season, right? Where nobody where originally he didn't think nobody thought he was gonna play more than 20 minutes than yeah, he played 33 games. Like, yeah. I mean, I just have him below some of these other guys uh, at, at similar prices. That's the best I can describe it. Um, not by too much, but I have him worse. Um other Golden State guys, I mean, boy, I'd have to really struggle to play either Wiggins or Clay or or or, or Draymond. And let me take a look at the um at the uh any values on golden state no i mean no not really uh on miami bam looks like a solid play Mm -hmm. and uh guy i don't like to play too often is is lowry looks like a solid play as well um so those would be the two guys i would look at from miami side um i have this feeling i'm just supposed to like stack up one of these other games or something like that but Mm -hmm. but if you ask me who i like from the game i would say lowry and bam and that's probably it yeah, I, I'm not particularly interested in Lowry. I do like Bam, and I think you could you could you could take a shot with the with Jimmy Butler here. Uh, he just put up you know 59 against the same team in in Golden State. Sort of that thing when they when they need him, they sort of you know. But but again, it's you know he had six steals in that game. I don't know how reliable you want to count on that being. But it's you know it's it's he, he tends to play well in big games, so I think he's on the list for me. Uh, Steph Curry's. Not, I'm not going to cross him off because I prefer Shea. But I, I do think that playing a little bit of Curry wouldn't, wouldn't be a terrible idea. And uh, but but Bam Bam and Clay will both be uh, core plays of mine today. Um, I think that they're they're the, the price is a little too cheap on Clay. I think he gets it going pretty soon. And uh, I like Bam in this specific matchup quite a bit. So those are the two guys from this game I'm, I'm highlighting. And I will probably mix in a, a lineup or two with Butler. That's basically all I got here. Um, I think Looney is an interesting large field play. I don't even know if it needs to be large field. Like he's 4,100. You're going to have a chalk, a uh, chalky uh, Jalen Williams. You could play him in addition or instead of, and I think that's not the worst idea in the world to try to get a little bit different on. It's going to be a tough slate to get different on. All right. Chicago, Brooklyn. Um, for me personally, I think this is a, it's a really good matchup for, for obviously for the bulls and you have Brooklyn on the back-to-back. It is a home back-to-back for what it's worth. I I really, I think Levine is my priority with Vooch being the next one for me, followed by DeRozan in that order. Um, Those are the three guys I'm interested in. I'm open to the Javante Green thing, but I think I would rather try to play the Looney instead of Green. Um, But I I don't know. I'm sort of struggling with that decision myself. So uh, I think that uh, Javante Green is going to look like a good play. I think he's going to have some ownership. I just don't know if I really want to, want to go that route he's not playing like a ton of minutes he's been productive in his minute in his time he's you know but not not like anything special especially with Levine back I just think that like maybe maybe I'll skip that piece of value but uh Vooch, Vooch and Levine are the main ones for me um and I don't mind if you want to do the you know the the weird what's it called uh the I'm not the weird but the DeRozan play I think I think one of those three guys goes off at least and maybe two in this this is a really good game stack potentially Although I, again, it's just KD I'm good with. He'll have some ownership. He had a big game last night. Kyrie I'm fine with, but I don't feel like excited to play those guys. And you have the low owned Watanabe who's going to look like a projection guy. I I don't know if I want to do any of that. So struggling, it's a game I want to get pieces of. Um, And then Watanabe should play minutes, assuming that we don't still don't have Ben, if if there is no Ben Simmons, but I don't know how many things he's going to play if Ben Simmons does play. And I guess Ben Simmons would just have to figure out whether what, what whether he's playing or not because if he does play, he's going to look like a good play. Um, right now, the the projections are sort of have him. I don't know what the hell's going on. They've got him playing like fifteen minutes. That's not going to be the case. And if he's yeah. out, you know, yeah, you can go back to Royce O'Neal as well. So what are you doing here? Because I, I'm sort of I, I'm not as interested in the Brooklyn side, but this is the game you want. You know, the highest total on the slate. You want to get pieces of it. I just don't know what I want to do yeah. exactly. With Brooklyn. I mean, I, I mean, it's you know it's hard to ignore. I mean. That's hard to ignore, but but Merritt's saying that that Duran is the highest projected point scorer on the slate. Um, he's you know re- relatively reasonable as far as his price goes, and it is a short slate. So with a, with a short slate, I mean you're you're going to want those points. Um, so um, I mean I like him. You know it's 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 not, I don't even know what I'm going to need really from him to even get there. I mean like I, I think that on a slate like this. Um, I think if he gets you 50, that might, that might be, that might be good enough. I don't know. Uh, let's, let's see how, I mean, let's see what these other guys really are able to put up. Um, Golden State Miami could be a very low scoring game. Um, 
the Phoenix game could blow out. Who the hell knows? And I mean, the guy I'd be worried the most, honestly, about outscoring Durant would be would be Shea. Um, doesn't mean you can't play Shea, but I'm just talking here. You know what I mean? Like, so, so, so I think Durant is is a, a, a kind of a crappy point scoring slave. If you want to know the truth, I mean, I, I think that uh, I think he should be used, and and I think Kyrie also. I, I wouldn't play both of them, but I think they're both in play. And all these other guys, I mean, I'm not really getting to on Brooklyn and and Chicago. Uh, listen, don't get intimidated by all these Q tags. They all look like they're going to play, and if they all look like they're going to play, I mean, they're all pretty. I mean, sort of fishy, you know. Um, I, I do like uh, Levine the best, and then I also like Booch. So mm -hmm. I think it's smart that if you do play uh, uh, Durant, it would be nice to use, you know, to use one of those guys, either Levine or or Vooch in there. Mm -hmm. um, but that's pretty much all I have. Yep, um, I'm on the same page as you. Uh, uh, I, I just am having trouble getting to the Durant thing because, again, I, I I prefer Shea. Um, He's a, he's got a higher, he's got a, he's got like the highest ceiling, I think of anybody on the slate and uh, in, in like a realistic ceiling. He just, and he, and he's, and he's just been absolutely a monster without Giddy. And I don't honestly know, like, I think he should be over 10 K now and early projections don't have him crazy owned. And as we get into that game, um, I, I'm going to, he's going to be a priority. It's going to be like spinning that wheel again. Like we, now we have a chalky Poku and that feels weird. Like, I mean, we were, this is a spot where like no one would play him because he wasn't getting any minutes at 4,200. He has a couple good games and now everybody's back on it, but we know they're just as likely to go elsewhere. So I'm going to let the ownership dictate what I do on the, uh, the Oklahoma city side outside of Shea. Um, and of course the, uh, the obvious Jalen Williams at 3,900 is going to stand out, but it does make me a little nervous with them. Just, just, just throwing it out there. When you get a guy who might be 60, 70% owned, maybe even higher, and and it's and it's from uh, OKC. It's just I just want to remind everybody that it's, there's no guarantee about how many minutes these guys are going to play. You'd think with the rookie they're going to give him some minutes here, but it just feels like you know that this is a, this is one we maybe want to get off of, and you want to see a starting lineup, which we're not going to have at lock. So because they always do that, and they mix in the Kenrich minutes, and they mix in some Muscala minutes, and all of these guys look very similar to me for Jalen Williams to be so much more owned. So I would. I, I initially he's the obvious play. He's going to be a part of my core because he's, you know, he's rating as the best value on the slate, but you can, you can just as easily flip that and, and play a guy like Kenrich Williams instead. And I don't think you're doing anything wrong on a small slate to try to get different. So that would be what I would encourage people to do is maybe take some shots that way or play, you know, we talked about Looney and just hope Looney evens out at 25 and none of these OKC guys outside of Shea really goes to five X. Um, and and on the Orlando side, I I, I think that uh, Paolo is really really good, just a, just a really really good basketball player. I also like this matchup for Wendell Carter, um, and and I'm not crossing off off Wagner or or I expect Suggs to be back or B B Wagner or Suggs, but they're not priorities for me. I do think one of Paolo or Wendell Carter is the way you want to go here. And I personally early on am leaning Paolo, but I might change my mind to Carter a little bit later on. How about yeah, you? so you hit on the OKC values. Uh, Jalen Williams and, and, and Poku are sh showing up as two of the top you know, values on the slate, and they're showing up as both, you know, Jalen Williams, I'm looking 40% ownership at this early stage, and Poku at 20. Um, 20 is not that bad, actually, for him in a four-game slate, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, he might be more at the end. Uh, and then, obviously, Shea, as I mentioned earlier. And then on the Orlando side, I yeah, what Wendell Carter and Bonchero, but I I definitely think that um that if uh, Suggs plays, I think Suggs is a really good play. Um, and if, if he doesn't play, boy, this this Wagner play is starting to really annoy me. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just like I bit last time when there was like no one else to play, and then, then he's he's supposed to be the point guard, supposed to be whatever. He did zero. Um, Except he played six, he put in 36 minutes, right? So yeah, it was three for 12, I guess. That's a good, that's good, I suppose. Mm -hmm. for only four assists. I mean, he's supposed to be sort of the point guard. I don't know, man. I, I almost want to, if Suggs plays, I, I like Suggs. I think if Suggs doesn't play, I don't think I want to play Vaughn. Um, yeah. But this is, this could be like a game to just stack. You know what I mean? You play Shea. Jalen and, and, and Pukashevsky, and you run it back with those three Orlando guys like Carter. 
I, maybe not all of them, but Carter, Suggs, Panchero. I just hope the game just goes bananas or something. Yeah, and, and of course, everything changes. If there's no Suggs, I, I don't mind taking shots on Bull Bull. Um, I don't mind. I, I still don't mind shots on, on Lou Dort anyway, but it's just, yeah. it just really feels like there's so many um, on the OKC side. I, I just feel like there's so – all these guys feel so interchangeable and you don't really know what they're going to do with their minutes because they change it all the time that it's really hard to trust like a chalky Poku. And I, I just want to go back to that Kenrich. Kenrich Williams may, may, may be the guy who plays the minutes tonight. It, you just really don't know with him. So maybe just that one direct pivot gets you different enough to, to at least do something. And Kenrich Williams, we've seen him put up, you know, 30s in games in the past, and there's no reason why he couldn't outscore the rookie here. I, I just initially am finding it very hard not to play the Jalen Williams thing. Um, but again, I, I feel very, very suspect of, of, of Poku and, and Kenrich and them. The problem is when they get there, they they, they can really get there. So you're either gonna, you're probably going to need one of them. Um, I'm just trying to find a creative pivot and probably have more for that later on today when we uh, when I go live. And I'll be I'll be good for live at six, and I know Sheets won't be here. Just uh, right, give you guys a heads up. So in the last game, Phoenix, Minnesota. First of all, it should be noted that Jock Londale and Bismack Biondo literally split the center mass twenty four each um, in the last game. I uh, just presume that that's what's going to happen this game. So um, I don't think either of them look particularly good. Uh, Devin Booker is obviously a good play, um, especially on a small slate. Uh, also. Boy, I would say also Chris Paul, I guess. He looks decent. On the Minnesota side, uh, you know, Cat's always good for the possibility of 50, but I don't know if Phoenix is – I don't know what Phoenix is going to look like without Aiton defensively. Probably better. I don't know. Um, so – I don't know about that. I don't know either. So Cat looks decent. And there's Edwards, the same thing. Edwards, Gobert, who do you play? I still, I think I agree. I would say agree because I don't know what you said yet. But in general, when you're picking between these guys, Edwards is the guy you kind of want to play mm -hmm. um, just because you know that he could just go crazy, you know, sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess he'd be my favorite. And uh, sure, you want to stack this game up a little bit, play Booker with a couple of Minnesotas or something like that. I think it makes sense. Yeah, I'm I'm deciding between my my guys. I, I think that Towns is 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 a really good play though here. Um I, I don't I don't like that, you know, I, I don't think they really match up well with uh, Phoenix doesn't match up well with him. And I think that he's been more they they've made him more a part of the offense and everything. He he or or Edwards, but but tonight I'm sort of leaning a little more in Towns' direction instead of Edwards, uh personally. And I think Devin Booker is gonna be pretty popular and I have no problem with that play. Um but I don't know. I, I also think like, you know, it's, it, it, I don't know. It doesn't excite me or anything like that. It's a, a popular Devin Booker who's very scoring reliant. who's only had 50 once this season, which is really what you want from him. If you're going to play him at nine K, otherwise you may as well play Durant for a higher raw ceiling. And I know it's a little more expensive. Um, I, we really haven't seen that, that massive upside this season from Booker. We know it's there, but it's just, just throwing that out there. Um Chris Paul is probably going to be a pass for me, but I think it's, I think it's, I think, again, I think it's fine. I, I don't feel overly excited about any of these, these Phoenix guys and the, and Booker is the one who looks like the best play. Um, but everybody else just sort of is meh for me. I, I don't have anybody else I really want to play. I guess if it had to be anybody, it would probably would be the, I would probably play Chris Paul, but I don't feel great about it. So um, can we talk ourselves into a Mikhail Bridges on a small slate? It's expensive, but I'm just trying to find something different to do here. And, and that's a really tough, you know, it's hard to pay 64. Well, you need him to make every, every shot he takes basically. Well, here's, here's, here are the guys. I'm not looking at like the top 20 guys. I'm looking at who is low, who is lower than 20% owned that, that rates decently. And I'll just throw a couple of, and, and it's, it's the guys that you would think would be like this, like good players who are maybe not the greatest fantasy players right now. Like, like if you get Curry at like twelve percent or something like that, mm -hmm. you know that that's something. And then and then you mentioned Butler. You know what you could do? You could play Curry and Butler. That's what you could do. Like you play mm -hmm. both of them. Um, and if you know you, you get you get that one of those things, you know what I mean? You're gonna be you're gonna be kind of happy about it. Um, and then like guys like DeRozan, right? I only have him at twelve percent ownership. Um, then you have like Gobert, like plays that seem like really just like, oh, you know what I mean? But that's what you that's what you got to go down to to get, you know what I mean, for these 10, 12% guys. And I only have uh, Edwards' own 13% right now, so maybe that's the idea. I don't know. 
Yeah. Um, Hero. I have Hero looking okay, I guess. I mean, yeah. how do you play that? <laughs> I just think I'd rather play. I like the, I like the Butler idea and I like the, uh, the mate potentially trying to find a way to fade Jalen Williams for some other maybe questionable chalk, but um Boy, that Orlando game. Just the more I look at it, it sort of it, it sort of makes you want to stack it up a little bit because I, I you, you want to play a couple guys from OKC. That I really do think trying to get one of Ben Caro or or uh, or Carter is a good idea today. I'm just going to go back to that. But they're yeah, going to be this isn't this them. isn't you know what? Going back to some of the other things I talked about, this doesn't seem like the day to play something like Kyle Lowry. You know what I mean? I, I agree with you on that. I mean, it's a uh, I mean, he's 23. It's not like he's low owned or anything. You know, he's going right. to be 20, 25%. And it's it's just a play, you know. Um, yep. I'd ra- you know what I'd rather do? I'd rather play, how about Clay Thompson? I, I don't know. I'm just trying to, like, think of of anything to do. And it's, uh, well, listen, hopefully something will open up. Um, hey, you know, what happened to what's his name this year? What, what happened to, uh, how has Kevon Looney been doing? I only asked because... I guess with, with Wiseman out, I guess most of the last year or all last year. Yeah, he's yeah. He's actually I, putting I, up I, fantasy I, points a little bit more last year, and I actually see it's carried over this year a little bit. He's actually yeah, he's fine. He's actually doing okay at forty one hundred. I don't see him being owned. I think um, that's totally fine. Um, I, I did want to mention one other guy too, Patrick Williams. You know, is starting to get his minutes back, and he's thirty five hundred. That's an interesting, different guy to play, and. And, and like, the thing is, like, he played 32 minutes in the last game after every previous game he'd been playing 20, 15, okay. 16. Uh, he started at 28 to start the season. He's not a high usage guy, but in a game against Brooklyn that's up and down, maybe you play, you play, you can play him with, uh, with uh, Jalen Williams and something like that and, and get a little bit, uh, you know, be able to spend up elsewhere. But I think he's going to be a really low owned piece of value where everyone's going to play Javon Carter. And there's no reason, in my opinion, to assume that Car- Carter Carter uh, should play l- less minutes than um, I'm sorry yeah Jav- I'm sorry Javante Green I keep saying Carter um, Javante Green why why is Javante Green necessarily going to play more minutes he tends to be more productive per minute than than Patrick Williams but I like just the idea of playing Williams to get off of that chalk so that's a that's something you could do a little bit different that's that's a value play that I'm probably going to end up using tonight. All right. Sounds good. All right. Well, good luck to everybody out there and I'll be live at six Eastern. All right. Good luck.